uh, a recent development called the IAPP, the International Association of Parliamentarians for Peace. So does everybody know what, a, what is a parliamentarian? A person who is working to some capacity or another in basically a government. A government is a way that people have organized their lives. Uh, all, every, uh, even cities have governments. Uh, states have governments. The counties have governments. Nations have governments. Uh, some people would even love to see a world level government because the purpose of a government is to help us organize ourselves. If you think about it, you know, if you want to do the small things on a small scale, if you're a family and, uh, you know, someone has to do the laundry, someone needs to mow the lawn, someone needs to, you know, make money to pay the bills, so you're, you're, you distribute little responsibilities among your family. But if you live in a society or a, a place that has tens of thousands or millions of people, and millions of people have to eat, and they have to have some kind of medical facilities available to them, they have uh, uh, sanitary situations that have to be dealt with, you know, you need electricity, you need uh, someone that can actually grow the food and distribute food, so you create a governing body to help you organize your life. But the ultimate purpose of our lives focuses in reality on the family. The family is meant to be the model of a structure for any good uh, activity. So the family should be the model for a good school. The family should be the model for a good uh, society. And the family should be the model for a good government. So the purpose of the government is to serve and support the family, ultimately. And uh, that is uh, a fact that uh, people who are spiritual in nature have come to believe and appreciate. Uh, in Washington, D.C., in November and December of 2016, uh, Mrs. Sun Myung Moon, the uh, wife of the late uh, Reverend Sun Myung Moon, decided to create and expand the Universal Peace Federation and make it accessible to other nations in the form of the IAPP. So she, along with other uh, government type people, decided to create this International Association for Parliamentarians for Peace to help them to realize and uh, associate with each other for the purpose of creating a peaceful environment. A peaceful environment for who? A peaceful environment for whoever it is that they govern. So this began in February of uh, 2016 in Korea. It was inaugurated as a uh, organization and it started with uh, several members and uh, one of uh, Mrs. Moon's daughters gave the keynote speech at this particular National Assembly. Now the fact that this begins in a country like Korea is very relevant because Korea is a country that is obviously torn in half. It is not a country of true peace. It is a country that has been divided since the end of World War II. And uh, in fact, there was a war in 1950 that was fought in Korea, and Korea was divided between North Korea and South Korea. Uh, we used to think, and, and to, to this day, we recognize this as a division between uh, a democratic a governing body and a communist governing body. But in fact, it is a division between two cultures and two peoples that aren't able, for some reason, to make a peaceful unity, unification with each other. So for this International Association of Parliamentarians for Peace to begin in Korea is very significant. But it has continued to grow from there. And what I'm going to do is go through 
the, uh, a lot of different places now that the, in, this association is being established in. Uh, in July of 2016 in Nepal. Now these are again uh, people in government who are coming together centered on the fundamental belief that the government is meant to serve the people and that we must find a way to create a peaceful environment uh, so that we can deal with whatever the issues are that we need to deal with. So I'm going to just run through these slides. So you have to look at them. And uh, this is in Nepal in 2016. Uh, there were 700 guests from 29 different nations that came to support the establishment of this organization in Nepal and in, uh, in Kathmandu. And then in uh, other places like Burkina Faso, in different uh, African countries. Uh, these are uh, all different places now in uh, London, uh, 150 participants from 40 nations came uh, and participated in the establishment of the IAPP in London, England. Uh, these are all people who are, have lived their lives in service to their countries. Either they're currently government officials of those countries or they were uh, people who previously had led in those countries. Uh, in Costa Rica, these are different places in Paraguay, the same concept, the same idea to create an organization of people in government who are in positions of power and authority and to try to encourage them and educate them to work together and cooperate together centered on these fundamental principles of true and lasting peace. In Zambia, Tokyo, Japan, Canada, uh, in the United States, in Washington, D.C., uh, this organization was uh, inspired, uh, guided by uh, Honorable Dan Burton, a former U.S. Congressman, and also Jose de Venecia, a former House Speaker and Co-Chair uh, from uh, the Philippines. These are some of the people you might recognize, uh, Danny Davies, uh, been in the Congress almost probably half of his life or two thirds of his life he's served this country. And, uh, Honorable John Doolittle, this was at the Kennedy Center. Then on to South Korea to bring the delegates together to discuss the issues of the North and South Korean situation. In Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, all over the world, Cambodia, Azerbaijan, maybe places that you aren't so familiar with or haven't even heard of, here in the Philippines, India, in South America, The Fiji Islands, Nigeria, Congo, Israel, Togo, Myanmar, used to be uh, yeah, Burma, Dominican Republic, Central America, Nicaragua, Costa Rica. These are all the progressive, the Marshall Islands, Bhutan, Benin, going through all these just to, to give you the impression and understanding that these are real people meeting for with centered on the same and similar purpose in Kosovo Trinidad and Tobago 
So these programs that we do here, the Ambassadors for Peace program, the Parents Day program, the uh, service projects, uh, the idea is to, to, to promote the idea of doing the same types of programs in these countries, uh, to encourage uh, the leaders of those countries to come together and to finally deal with these issues of peace and the barriers that are preventing us from having peace in the Ukraine, Peru. And this is a list of all these different countries so far that have participated in, in this inauguration of these, uh, the IAPP. So, after World War II, many people had great hope in the United Nations. The United Nations, the whole idea of a United Nations was to be a body where all the different governments of the world would be able to come together and deal with their issues. Unfortunately, the reality is, is that the United Nations has become very, uh, in a way we could say materialistic, or it's, uh, many of the countries that are involved end up being more concerned with their own self-interests and their own uh, uh, wealth or their, their political views or whatever, and they're not able to, to really make a true type of unification, and they're not able to create true peace. So the purpose of an organization like IAPP is to try to promote and encourage and support these same kinds of uh, government officials to have hope that there are people and there is an organization, the Universal Peace Federation, that is concerned directly with the true peace of, of the world. So thank you. This is just one of the projects of the uh, Universal Peace Federation. And so now what we're going to do is talk about the Ambassadors for Peace program. And uh, already, uh, of course, Carolyn Sampson mentioned it, but I want to talk about the key points. I apologize. I'll change the schedule. We're going to stop here. Okay. Thank you. We're going to do the next part. Oh, okay. We're going to take a break. Oh, we're going to, I'm sorry. I apologize.